Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki C. Super excited to be here today, bringing you another amazing guest. I had the pleasure of meeting this guest on a platform um, online where we were uh, just sharing hope, empowerment, Uh, to the world. Just absolutely love and adore her, her story, her testimony. Before we get into her bio, let me just thank our sponsors for continuing to make Building a Leadership Mindset podcast happen, bringing you amazing entrepreneurs um, with real life struggles and challenges that they've overcame, but still stood in the fight to keep their mission alive and going as they impact the world, which is what Bomb Global is all about. About. So super excited. Thank you so much to Jose Escobar from the Connected Leaders Academy. We have uh, Julian Noah from Breathe Capital Planning, uh, financial um, services that they have, as well as uh, Rude Financial, who is our um, tax wizard. Uh, he's also the author of the Dirty, uh, IRS's Dirty Little Secrets. So you definitely want to connect with any and all our sponsor sponsors by going to our website at buildingaleadershipmindset.com and get all the information um, we have going on with Bomb Global. Thank you so much. And without further ado, let's get this beauty on here. Uh, born in Michigan, Kenya Brin is a mother, author, ordained minister, speaker, and follower of Jesus Christ. Ms. Brin is a confident encourager who continues to remain rooted in the word of God. She is a very direct woman who lovingly cares for and about others. Ms. Brin now advocates for the broken, lost, and abandoned. It is her heart to share with others the message of not having to be a victim and that we can rise up from the ashes completely victorious. Now residing in Ohio, Ms. Bryn continues to share the gospel and good news of Jesus Christ with those who have ears to hear none other than Corinne, I am so uh, happy to know you. Let's bring her on here. Amazing work. And um, as you read in her bio is what attracted me to her and her story. And we are so blessed to have you here. How are you, my dear? Oh, so blessed and happy to be here. What a blessing and an honor. Thank you. You are so, so welcome. Thank you again for accepting our invitation and now joining the Bomb Global family here on Building a Leadership Mindset podcast. And again, we met on a platform, right? Yes, we uh, did. We, uh, tell us how we met and who we connected, who connected us. So Rachel Best had connected with me online and saw my profile and got super excited because we both full time RV and I'm an author. So she was like she had to connect with me. And it's been an absolute blessing since because through that connection, I've, I've been honored and blessed to connect with you and several other ladies. So it's it's been amazing. That's awesome. Yes. Rachel Best, also a member of Ladies of Leadership. Um, I was actually on her platform as a guest last year for making a mark in the world. And when she, when I met her and she told me that was her mission, that was her, um, and I was a guest on her podcast. I'm like, oh my goodness, like, aren't we all looking to make some type of mark? And some of us strive to do so. Some of us get stuck because we're in, whether it's shame, guilt, remorse, Mm -hmm anything like that, um, which all of us as human have been through that once or another, right? Tell us a little bit about your story and um, what led you to be this God-fearing, just woman of power and movement. My mistakes. No, (laughs) that's part of what led me to be who I am today. I'm an author, of course, so I've wrote two books, both being my autobiographies and Broken Not Shattered is very raw, very real. I went through a lot of things in my youth, as most of us have. Um, that would include, you know, I was molested. I've been raped. I've I've went through al- addiction, alcohol addiction, drug addiction. Uh, I turned to a lot of things because of what happened to me in my youth. 
Um, I thought it, I, it was my identity. You know, I was just this broken woman. And, and so throughout the years, I tried to numb all that pain. Uh, and then I always knew that Jesus was the answer. So, you know, I'd go through those moments where life would get tough and I'd open my Bible and read a little bit and try to understand it. But it was very hard, uh, you know, to really comprehend what church was telling me and what scripture was revealing, uh, because some of the meanest people I had met were in church. Obviously, I'm covered in tattoos. And that was really hard for me because I would get rejected and, and judged. And um, so throughout the years, I, I knew I'd always write a book. I, I knew I was going to, but I had tried to start it. And it was so hard, you know, because I wanted to share what had happened to me. But yet it was like reaching into old wounds and and pulling out roots and, and it would get super painful. So I'd back away. Um, finally in 2015, I sat down and it was like, it had just always been there and it just started flooding out of me. And by the blessing of it, the, the product of that blessing was, it was like each chapter was a chain was falling off as I exposed light, you know, and exposed what happened, the darkness couldn't torment me anymore. And so there was a lot of freedom in writing broken, not shattered. Um, however, I claimed to be free, but yet I was drinking, you know, I would drink alone because I didn't sleep well, because as you had mentioned, shame, guilt still kind of lingered over me. And those are just tools of the web or, and weapons, really, not just tools that the enemy uses to come against us. And so when I finally hit this, this pivot point in, um, uh, when was this, 2017, it was July of 2017, I made a super big mistake and I just woke up with shame and guilt almost coddling me. It was ridiculous. And I was like, okay, I don't want to live this way and yet I'm living this way. You know, I, I make excuses. I can't sleep at night, so I'll just drink a pint. No one would see me, but I still thought like the world knew, you know, everybody was watching me. So that guilt and shame and condemnation would always come into play. So I finally fell flat on my face and early January of 2018, I just forgave those who had hurt me. I, I surrendered everything to Christ and realized, okay, I'm going to receive his forgiveness because I wasn't taught that, you know, it was Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Ooh, that's super convenient, right? Well, uh, I ended up um, realizing that he didn't just die on that cross because I was a wretched sinner, but he died on that cross because I was a lost daughter. He died on that cross for my sin, not because of it. And so I, I realized there was a place I needed to receive his forgiveness. Um, oh my it's okay. God. It's okay. This is the real raw show. Do it is have real. To Give me just <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Oh my God, this has been absolutely phenomenal so far. I am just super excited. Again, this is the hot call open. Uh, so I'm, call, I'm open so sorry. Here. No, don't apologize. It is okay. So there's actually a sign on the door. <laughs> um, so I'm a, I'm a campground host at this moment. So people come knocking on the door sometimes, but Okay, so sorry about that. Uh, it's okay. So what had happened was, is when I realized that that the price that was paid for me was greater, so I just finally recognized that there was a receiving, right? So we have this false humility where we're like, oh my goodness, God, I, how could you forgive me all the things I've done? And we call that, you know, humility, but it's false. He's like, look, what you've done is nothing compared to what I've done for you. And there's a place where we receive his forgiveness and go, you know what? You've paid a price for the mistakes I've made, the sins I've lived in, you know, all of those things I walked through that you never created me for. And in that place, there is so much freedom. So recognizing that, you know, although I was raped and beaten and molested, you know, I was walking in the identity of, of a victim of what happened to me, claiming I was not a victim. But yet I was because I held what they did to me to a higher standard than what Jesus has done for me. 
right? Oh, oh it was yeah. it was incredible. It was there was so much freedom in realizing, okay, look, if they would have known who they were in Christ, if they would have known that they you know they were valuable, that their identity um, was a, a son in in the kingdom, you know, a citizen of heaven, they would have never touched me. They would have never ever touched me. So why was allowing, I was allowing, why was I allowing for all those years, someone who didn't know their identity to, to actually kind of shape my identity. And it was false. Jesus is the only one who actually is my identity. He created me to shine his light, to, to glorify him in this world, not what happened to me. So I realized and recognized that there is an enemy who really is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's good at what he does. Oh, is he good? So rather than carrying the weight of what occurred and what happened, I recognized that I could let Jesus have that and start carrying the light and the forgiveness and the love that he has for me. And there was so much freedom in those moments. It it was overwhelming. So January 17th, flat on my face, had a massive encounter with Holy Spirit, sis. I mean, massive, lit up from the inside out. Um, weeks later, I just, I couldn't contain it. Like God's real, right? Like he is so real. He loves us. And so I started going to grocery stores because I was reading scripture and it became alive to me. It made sense. You know, he says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, you know, these things you'll do and more. And and I'm like, OK, <laughs> so I started going to stores and I was praying for people and I witnessed people getting out of wheelchairs. I, I witnessed some of the most incredible things that only God could do. And then weeks later, I had a woman come up and tell me that the Lord told her in prayer to bless me and to pay my debt in full and that she needed me to get every bill I had together. And I'm like me like are you sure me and I got every bill I had together she ended up paying my student loans I mean everything I got blessed with a brand new truck months later a lady said that the Lord blessed her with money to bring glory to his kingdom and that she wanted to buy me a home and I got handed a quarter million dollar cashier's check it could, it, I, you know because it's not something I did it's just, I love him. And, and so she handed me a quarter million dollar cashier's check to purchase my first home. And it was a six bedroom. That's a whole nother story. Six bedroom home in Texas um, that I ended up dedicating to students that were attending an evangelist school. So it wasn't my home. It was his. And I just got to be the lucky steward of it, you know, until he called me somewhere else. And it was like, if he's not in it, it's not worth it. You know, I, I chase the money and I'll be happy when most of my life. Yeah, I'll be happy when the bills are paid. I'll be happy when I have a home that's mine. I'll be happy when whatever. And and the real the realism of knowing that I'm his makes me happy right now. <laughs> you know, I don't need things to align to be okay. I'm okay because I'm his. And and he wants that for all of us. So yeah, I was recognizing it's about a relationship with him not religion it is so about a relationship not religion he's uh, after our hearts yeah definitely after our hearts oh my goodness there's a lot to to dissect here right so really first i want to just go back to the word you said quite a few times which was identity which a lot of times we walk some people walk their whole life not even knowing or figuring out what that identity is yeah. How important was that for you through this journey um, that when you finally decided or or got the downloads, the information, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> where you can finally say, this is me, this is who I am, I am his daughter, I was made in his image, he has given me life, he has, um, I have went through these struggles and pains and heartaches, but it never, it, it no longer defines me because at some point it did, right? So let us know how you were able to plug those things into place and uh, and really find that identity and how important is it for people to seek it today? It is so relevant because there's so much freedom when we recognize who we are. So we're not, we're not what happened to us. 
Now, it doesn't mean that what happened to me wasn't relevant. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. But what what it does mean is when I realize that I'm a citizen of heaven, right? I'm a daughter to the king. When I realize that he actually has a coat of righteousness that he wants to put on me and that that stuff is that that stuff is actually so far away from me that it has no relevancy to who I was made to be in him. It is so relevant that we recognize who we are through and in him beyond what we've experienced. So it's like he gave us feelings, right? And and some of them are so mushy and amazing and they're great. And, and some really just lack of better words suck right i mean we get depressed we get all these things coming at us but when we can stand in the truth of who christ says we are we are wholly righteous uh-huh. above reproach that we've been he paid a high price for us right that it's the good fight of faith and and the struggle that we find a lot of people go through is it's like we we want to glorify spiritual warfare but it's really scripture says that it's the good fight of faith so Faith is believing in the things hoped for that are not seen. So it's going, okay, God, I don't feel love today, but I know that your word says you love me. So I'm going to stand in the truth of who you say I am. And you say that I'm valuable to you and that you adore me and that you have good plans to prosper me, that you have good plans to to just have your hand on me, that you'll never leave me or forsake me. So I'm going to trust your word today over these feelings. Because although he gave us feelings, he didn't give them to us to lead us. Mm. But we give so much credit to our feelings. <laughs> like, like there, yes, yes. you know, there, so we'll actually place what we feel above the truth of what he says. And we have got to stop doing that. Our identity is found in him. So the more that we contain and reveal like, and contain in our hearts his word and reveal, you know, who we are by reading his word. Right. It, it shifts everything. So so I always tell others, you know, like the Bible doesn't contain God. It reveals him. It's like a mirror into who we are. And it's relevant because a lot of the time we're so seeking to be filled this way or this way. We think that, you know, we can numb the pain or sometimes we just need to walk through the pain. You know, sometimes it's in that testing and those trials that our faith can be built rather than trying to hinder it, hide it, numb it. We need to expose it and bring light to it because I'm a firm believer that when we keep that pain and the secrets and the bad things in us, as if, you know, as if the world is going to think less of us, you know, that is where the enemy ends up building this playground and torments us, tortures us, doesn't allow us to sleep. The shame builds even greater. Then we become almost hypocritical because we'll put a face mask on of oh i'm happy but inside we're tormented and and we have to stop doing that because that is where the enemy gets a hold of us and then we don't know our identity because our identity becomes trying to hide what happened because the world's gonna see me get forget all of that let it go because here's the deal when you expose light to the darkness right? Light is greater than darkness. It cannot stay. It cannot stay. Hallelujah. So, so the Lord is good and he wants us free, but we even read in James, he talks about the trials and tribulations are, are actually what builds our patient endurance. It builds our faith. We can lean into him. The problem we, a lot of us have is we want to numb that pain and bring it down. Sometimes 99.9%, you need to walk through it. You need to stop holding it down. Now there's, there's wisdom. He says, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. So you want to make sure that when you're talking to someone, you're talking to someone who's going to point you to him. We have a hard time with that. So that's relevant to our identity as well. Who do we surround ourselves with? You know, so you, you've got a lot of friends of mine, they, they are challenged with me and that's OK. And I've lost friends, too, because I had one that came to me is like, Kina, we're having a burn party on Friday. You know, you should come. And I'm like, a burn party. What are you talking about? And her husband was so lost that he cheated on her. And then that was horrible for her. And I I understand that she was hurting. But I said, what are you doing? And she's like, we're going to burn everything of his. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm not that friend that's like, yeah, girl, you know, that's <laughs> right. He's such a dog. How could he do that? I shocked her because I said, you know, sis, it's it's really sad that you're going to do that because how lost he must be to actually step out and do that. We should be having a prayer party for him and start praying for him. Not a burn party. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, some some women don't. They're like, what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> So what we do is we get around people who will cater to our emotions. And sometimes our emotions are not accurate and not in line with God. And when they're not and they're being catered to, we feel justified. So now I can hold on to my bitterness, which is going to create unforgiveness. It's going to create anger. It's going to create all the things that God says, no, you're to forgive. You're to let go. You're to love even your enemies. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So much power in everything that you said. I a hundred thousand percent agree. Um, and it's so important to me for the identity part, because again, sometimes we just lack to even search for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but just going back to some other things you said, um, and, and this was the blessing that God used someone to bless you for your mission that you were probably unprepared for. Um, you didn't know that that was coming, but you, when you surrendered, that's when the doors opened, right? That's when people started being postured and position in your oh, yeah. world. Um, once you open that door now, and, and this is again, something that I think we need to, to talk about in regards to getting that blessing. How many times have people tried to help us in one way, shape or form, and we just don't feel like we need it. We feel like, nope, you know what? I don't want to take advantage. I don't want to, but do, and let me know if you agree with me. When someone gifts you something and the rejection, right? Let's say we reject it because we want to be humble. We don't want to, again, whatever excuse we put on why we can't take it, we can't accept it. Um, or the mindset that we have, oh, what is it in it for you? What do I have to do for it? All these things, right, that come up into our head. It, it's important for me to let our audience know that we are blocking their blessing when they're blessing us. I was put in my seat one time because someone had told me, um, this was a year after I had did a podcast with them. They were on this same podcast here. Um, I, I was new to the business, only doing it for a year, wrote my book, started my podcast, started my community, did all these things, but I had no time to really stop and acknowledge them. I was just going, going, going. So when they went and gave me a compliment saying, Hey, oh my goodness, Nikki, you've done amazing this past year. Like I haven't seen anything like it. Some people don't even pass three months, like congratulations. And I, my response, <laughs> my crazy response was, oh, I'm just doing what I got to do. The person was floored. They were taken back. They were like, oh my goodness, Nikki, did you just realize that you have not acknowledged the growth in yourself? And when someone gives you a compliment, it's just a simple thank you, I receive it, and then steward it some more. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, because you were blessed. You were less big, right? Um, yeah. God positioned that in any time in your mind, were you ever thinking about not taking the offer? Didn't know what to do with like, what was your mindset? Um, <laughs> and just tell us about that. This is funny that you asked. So when the woman came up to me and said, the Lord told her to pay my debt in full that she needed me to get every bill together. I was, I was taken back. I, I just couldn't comprehend it was really happening. And it took me a week and a half before I actually even tried to get bills together because I was raised. You work for what you have. You work for what you want to get. That way no one can ever tell you that, you know, they gave it to you. And I was raised to be a very independent woman. You know, you don't accept things. You you strive and work hard for things. And and so it was pride. It was straight pride. Um, as much as we want to be convinced that that's humility, it's it's the opposite. It's pride that is hindering us. So pride can block our blessings. So God uses others to bless us. 
And when we reject that, you know, it's kind of like I always look at that scripture where he says, I knocked on the door and needed food. You, you turned me away. You didn't feed me. You know, you didn't clothe me. Yeah, God uses others to bless us. Now, you know, it's important for us to understand that pride and false humility will block those things. So I sat on that couch and a week and a half later, I heard almost audibly the Lord say, what are you doing? I've sent someone get your bills mm-hmm. together. And it, it blew me away. So it was like, okay, you know, I, I, I did. And it became so overwhelming, but it was in giving him the glory and, and being able to say, man, this is the Lord at work. He's doing this. I didn't have to ask. I didn't ask anything. It was all just, it, it was like I had an umbrella up the whole time blocking his grace and his blessings. And I held the umbrella. And then when I finally surrendered and was like, Lord, whatever your will is, I'm in. And I took that umbrella down. It was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. And he knows my heart. See, so so my heart isn't, oh, I want to get rich so that I can be better off. My heart is like, man, I could bless so many people if I had a little bit more, you know, like if even from my least, I am, I'm blessing others. It's because what he's given me, you know, if he can trust you with the little, he can trust you with the bigger. So it's pride that we need to recognize in us and pray and ask him, Lord, please reveal any pride that's hiding. Please take away any pride that's in me. You know, I used to think that it was really wrong of me to accept the thank yous and, the, you know, because I minister to a lot of people. I've I've been very humbled and blessed to baptize well over 100 people, minister the gospel and just see lights coming on. And and I've got some that come to me and are like, Kina, thank you so much. And and yes, I'm like, oh, it's it's all him. And yet they're like, but you're being obedient. And you're, you're doing what he's calling you to. And, and, and it was hard for me to receive that at first, but finally it was like, you know, I love you. And, and he is, he's amazing. He loves you. And thank you for thanking me. I, I, it means a lot, you know, it, but it keeps us in a place of humility and going, okay, what he's doing is far greater than what I could ever do. He may be using me in it, but I, I want to continue to give him glory for it. So I just pray that they see him through every action and everything that I do. And I make sure of it. But I also am humble enough to say, thank you. You know, you're loved. And, and that's really relevant. Get rid of that pride and recognize that God is amazing and he gets the glory, but he's using you. And so when you welcome him in, it, it's Oh my goodness, the things he'll do in those moments. I had a really hard time accepting the gifts. I mean, it's it's incredible what he does. I've had people donate um, to support my book tour. That that was incredible. Over twenty thousand dollars just you know donated. And but I've learned that this is how he operates. He he wants to bless us, and he will use others to bless us. Because when you bless them by being obedient in him. Like, uh, you know, Paul's like, you know, they follow me because I follow Christ. It's kind of like marriage. Same thing. You know, we follow our, our partner because they follow Christ. You're you're able to submit easier. You're able to be obedient easier to the Lord when you're following somebody that's following him. And and pride will hinder that. You know, scripture says he he uh he, he, he moves away from the prideful, but he draws to the humble. You know, he rejects the prideful, but, ooh, and it's, it's so evident in our surrender to him, you know, going, look, I'm just yours. Whatever you want me to do, I'm in. I'm I in. I love it. Oh, my goodness. Just some great, great, great information here that I just think people really need to hear or even be reminded that we have been put here for a purpose. And when we're taking action and when we're stewarding his uh, blessings that he's given us, right? The skills, the gifts, the that, that salesperson, that dishwasher, that teacher, that uh, coach, whomever, and you, and he knows your heart and he knows your struggles as well. He will send you those people that will bless you. But sometimes we are so, blind 
that we don't even see it as an opportunity or an advancement or a blessing. We just see it as, I, I don't, I, I can't even explain what some people really think. So if you're listening to this, drop your comments here. Have you been in that position where um, you were offered a gift and you just didn't take it because you just didn't feel like you deserved it, right? That's another thing. We feel like we don't deserve uh, these amazing blessings and, the, and, and, and we do, we're deserving of all. Like he doesn't want us to lack. He doesn't want us to be without. And when you surrender, all those, all those doors open. I mean, I'm a walking testimony of that, you know, being rejected from an organization for what I'm building today. But did I give up? Did I say, you know what? I'm not worthy. I'm going to sort of put that in the closet and try something else. No, I said, oh, I'm rejected. Let, let, let's, let's see where this is supposed to go and who is this supposed to be for? Because there is an audience for everyone and God will bring them to you. You just have to show up and be ready. Even yes. if one person comes, be ready, pour that love, that commitment, that that promise into that person so that they can develop and it starts to create a ripple effect. So I'm mm. sure you've seen ripple effects from you surrendering and you being blessed and now you're blessing other people over a hundred baptisms. Oh my goodness. God bless you for doing that and just bringing people to the word yeah. um, and letting them decide, right? Not saying, Hey, you have to do this, but I'm a walking testimony and I'm going to share my story. And you know, you can go which way you want because we all have that decision, but it's yeah. just so powerful. As you talk, I get chills uh, because of uh, this message, because it's something that I've been talking on calls with, you know, the past couple weeks, months, years, really the last two and a half years has nothing, has been nothing but conversations on miracles, mm. on changes, on mindset shifts, on abundance, on, and, and even through the struggle, even through the challenges, because those, those arrows are going to come for us every oh, yeah. time when the enemy knows that something great is about to happen and you feel like you're being attacked. That's because you are on the path. So keep riding that path. Oh my God, Kena, it's been absolutely amazing. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to see what you're working on now and how people could get a hold of you because your message is powerful. How can they get um, copies of your books? And we're going to talk about that book tour too, because that's when we connected and I had to wait until that book tour was over, but it was all worth it, babe. Give me <laughs> one second. Hi, my name is Jose Escobar, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Connected Leaders Academy. We're a growing tribe, a community of entrepreneurs all over the world, globally, all across the country, high performers, titans of industry. If you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to grow personally and professionally, scale your influence, develop your skill sets, move the needle in your business, more clients, more money, more profit, the bottom line, and of course, grow your circle and your network like never before, this is where you want to be. Join the Connected Leaders Academy today. We are scaling massively. We want to welcome you in. Check me out on Instagram and on Facebook, the at symbol JASCO25. We look forward to having you join us. Take care. Hello, hello. We are back with Kina. Bryn, all the way in Ohio. Super happy to have her here. That was a Connected Leaders Academy. And also, Ladies of Leadership is celebrating their two-year anniversary, November 16th. Check out our website for more information on that or connect with us um, on all our social platforms, also on our web website. Uh, so, Kina, wow, what a powerful uh, first half of this conversation and your story is absolutely phenomenal uh, to see people go through that journey and really surrender um, what they have thought to be normal for such a long time and uh, really just got tired of being in that ham on that hamster wheel of just sometimes we say, why do we trip over the same rock? over and over again and we're just repeating uh those same mistakes but you surrendered and you are blessing the world tell us tell us first about the title of your book where we can get it and um 
when was the thought of the book tour uh, ready to rock and roll? And I know it was like 10, 11 months and tell us that journey. Yeah, so uh, my books are titled uh, Broken Not Shattered and Healed Not Broken. Uh, Healed Not Broken is my testimony in full of just the year 2018 wild ride. I, I knew um, in April of 2019, I was going to write that book. The Lord gave me the title and I I just got it finished and published in 2023 it released. Um, so <laughs> I started the year out last year in a prayer and a fast and I heard the Lord say as clear as day, prepare to move. And I thought, Okay. Um, and all I got from that was just those words, prepare to move. So I didn't know if he meant spiritually, physically, what was going on at that point. And then in April, it came to me over 12 times in one day. I mean, it was over a dozen times, prepare to move. So I, I literally ran out to the store and bought totes and packed my whole house up and put it on the market. And everything started falling into place only the way God can do it. So it's it's never the way we imagined it's going to be. But um, so I ended up uh, selling the house. I bought a travel trailer and began the book tour. I didn't know where I was going, how it was going to happen, but it all lined up. I hit 25 states in 11 months and uh, did 100 book signings. And it was incredible. Um, the thing I ran into the most was just a lot of people are church hurt. Um, they they reject Christ because of people who say they love Christ did them wrong. And I just want to encourage us to remember that, you know, just because someone has done us wrong, we've got to recognize that our faith is not in people. Actually, Christ says to put your trust in no man. So if you're hurt and staying away from him because of a church or people, then where was your faith put in the first place? So I just yeah. encourage you to seek him because most of the time, the way people act are nothing like how he would act. Right. So the book tour went amazing. Uh, and then I ended up. It's, it's so it's so supernatural, sis. It really is. So five years ago, I got a vision on being in Tennessee. I knew the Lord was calling me to Tennessee and I knew I would have some property and a home that would be dedicated, I thought, to sex trafficking victims or maybe domestic violence victims, but I knew there'd be a ministry there. My family and I've been joking about it for five years now that we're going to have property in Tennessee. Well, uh, after the book tour ended, I decided to serve and I wanted to be a campground host. So I ended up getting a position available in New Hampshire. Three days later, uh, the Lord had someone call me and offer me a position in Kentucky and at the da uh, Daniel Boone National Forest. And it just there was so much peace. And I knew, uh, OK, I'm going there. So I prayed on it and confirmed it a couple of days later, headed to Daniel Boone National Forest in Kentucky. Um, soon after that, the Lord has brought a man into my life that, I mean, I've been single for nine years, so this is new to me. <laughs> I want to be obedient to the Lord and I'm not trying to follow my emotions and be silly, but this man has completely, he's amazing. He loves the Lord. Um, you know, we do Bible study together. He's incredible. Well, he actually has already established a home in Kentucky or in Tennessee he owns a ranch on 40 acres and is currently in the process of be it becoming a place to help broken men and it's going to be a ministry with vocational offers and a 30 60 and 90 day program and um we've come together We're, we love one another greatly um and we've been discussing so you know me being a part of the ministry side of that ranch and he's going to be teaching the vocational side of that ranch we're going to have guest speakers um guest pastors worship uh, and it's already, I mean, he's very close to having it built and we're hoping, we're hoping to get it open in uh, spring next year. And it's all the Lord's doing. It's all glory to him. And, and I'm, I'm floored. <laughs> I'm just, I have a hard time like believing it's happening. Uh, and, but I, I just, it is happening. It, it is happening. And so, yeah, it's, it's never the way we imagine it. 
Not, and I was just going to say that I'm like, wow, a vision five years ago, being in Tennessee, opening a ministry, and then boom, he brings again that angel into our lives. Yes. That that says, hey, this is what I have, and now you are about to live that out. This is yeah. what I'm talking about. These are the things that we think about that we disregard because we think we can't do it. We don't right. know how to do it. Um, and, and we think we have to figure it all out and we have to, you know, create it. And though we do, it's with the people that he brings into our life. It's just yeah. us being alert and ready. I, I love when you said you heard the words, um, you are going to move or um, what was it again? Prepare to move. Prepare, Prepare to, to move. move. Yeah. And you know what? I don't know what this is, but let me get some toast. Let me pack my bag because... <laughs> You stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I love That's that right. phrase by Will Smith. I'm sure he wasn't the originator, um, but that is something I wrote in my book as well. You stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Um, yeah. Pay attention to what the words you are being fed. Um, if it's negative, it's not from God. It just isn't. He's not going to steer you that way. He might challenge you, right? Oh yeah. He will challenge you, especially when you are um when you're doubting, when you're in doubt. Um, oh my goodness, so so good. So now and tell us about what you're doing there in Ohio on the campground. So that's in the works for hopefully April 2025. Super excited, can't wait for that. Yeah. Uh well, actually I'm I'm actually in Kentucky right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um so we closed this season uh November 1st. I've been a campground host, so I'm cleaning bathrooms, I'm cleaning sites, I'm ministering. I've had two baptisms in my lake behind me. <laughs> I I I absolutely just I love sharing with others and just lifting others up because I think one of the things you had mentioned is, you know, we get this identity crisis going. We don't understand we're valuable. And when you were talking about, you know, those, those gifts, like when people try to bless us, we don't, it's the same exact thing when we don't receive the gifts from others that God is using in our life, right. To bless us. But it's the same with him. Like he wants to put on a coat of righteousness on us. And a lot of the time we don't feel like we're worthy of that. So if we could just, put on the code of what he says and who he says we are, a lot will shift. Um, for me, I'm, I'm actually going to be going to Tennessee in November. Um, I'm leaving for Honduras on November 4th for an adventure that I'm going on. I'm not sure God's plans there, but I'm super excited because church is like right where our feet are. We're, we've been having church for you know almost an hour now. Come on. It's, it's yes. more gathered. Come on. It's so good. And he's among us. And so it's not four walls. It's, it's going to be, you know, I, I live this way. Like I don't have to be one way in front of anyone. It's, it's who I am. I have, you know, just this heart to share with others of how valuable and loved they are. Uh, we don't recognize it. So my next project really is at this point, focusing on the ministry that's being built and put together in Tennessee. Um, it, it's funny. It was five years ago, right? But he was like, hey, we're going to go to Tennessee. And I'm going to send you there. You're going to do a ministry. It's going to be amazing. And I'm like, yes, this is going to be so much fun. And he's like, isn't it though? But right now we're going to Texas. <laughs> Yeah, you know, know, he had some things he had to work and, and, and challenges he needed to grow me. And so I just want to encourage anyone that's that's, you know, maybe in that struggle right now to know that that if he's given you a vision for something, you know, he's going to get you there. But there may be some things that he needs to chisel. There may be some lessons he needs to teach you. You know, there may be some things you got to go through before he's going to take you there. Don't quit. Just keep seeking him and keep giving him your heart and having that relationship with him. It's not like he's going to forget the plan he had for you. He goes before us. 
And so, but just note and don't get totally upset if it don't look the way you think it's going to look because nine times out of 10, it doesn't. I thought I was going to own this property and I'm going to build this ministry and, and it's nothing like what I thought. I mean, I never imagined, like I said, I'm nine years single. You know, I, I never imagined he'd bring a man into my life that, you know, I would, I would love and that would love and honor me as well. I mean, I honor him very much and, and we want to keep the Lord center it. And it's, it's phenomenal. I never expected it to be this way, but yet here we are. And, and I'm excited. I'm just so excited to see what God's going to do next. I am so happy. <laughs> for you i am happy to have you now in my life just as a friend as a sister um and see you know where this goes and um i'm just so proud of just your tenacity your resiliency your your just fire your fire and your love for him his word and your mission and again just Thank staying you. true to who you are yourself and and Oh my God. Like I'm like literally speechless. Oh, I can say a lot, but um, <laughs> I can't even articulate and put into words how good this, these what 46 plus minutes have been um, in, in just um, a little short of time, just giving other people hope. And that's really what it's about is Amen. for you to believe that we are just two women here in this world trying to survive, trying to do everything we, we come here to do with what we have and looking to impact. And all it takes is a little bit of love and a little bit of action. That's it. And Amen. That. And you've taken your story, your testimony, your message, his message um, into everything that you do. And that's why I so appreciate you and what you're doing and when i heard you um on rachel's platform i'm like i need to get her story on my podcast like there's no way we cannot um showcase this type of love because this is this this is what i see is really my journey in a you know in two and a half years yeah. of just being obedient to the calling and just staying still and listening to the word and figuring out what the next steps are and building off of the ideas that he has been able to bless me with and having, you know, being able to, to pay it forward to my community. to those that I touch to those that um, are our partners, right. Our collaborators, our business besties, we like to call them, but our family, um, there's so much that we can do. We, we just don't understand the power that we have. That's and it. This is what the power looks like when you surrender and accept and, and and seek those answers, right? And fill in those blanks that we have been walking all our lives without. And the answers are here. They're right in front of us. They're within us. They're in our surroundings, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because you're going to get things that you probably don't need to know. And you're going to um, try to make something out of that. But when you are totally in control and have a vision and take that vision to that next level, it's totally doable, totally possible. Um, tell us one last thing about the work that you had to put in for this transformation, for this journey, because I know that was not easy. Ooh, uh, well, you know, I, th I think I can just reference back to, you know, he is my strength and my weakness. Uh, it, it was far from easy to get to where I'm at, but what I've recognized is, I think the best way to describe it, sis, is going to be when I, when I had the encounter with the Lord on July, or excuse me, January 17th of 2018, it was three days later that I just had this massive conviction to throw away all my alcohol, all my pills, all my weed, everything. And when I threw it all in the trash, I, I realized I needed to get it out of the house because it had a voice, right? It had been calling to me for years. So I take the trash can out and I put it in the burn pile and I go back in my trailer and anybody that could have been walking around or could have possibly ever heard me would have thought I'd lost my mind because I grabbed my Bible and I said, addiction, you no longer have authority in my life. You're done. Your voice is done to me. And I was set free. I was set free from all of those addictions. 
So I think the best way to describe it is I, I would have this path, this road I had to take home. And at this stop sign, there was a liquor store on this side. It was my favorite liquor store. Then there was a liquor store on this side. And you get through that stop sign, there was a bar on this side. And then my favorite bar was on this side. And when I first was set free, it wasn't like God put this fury angel in front of the door and was like, no, Kina, you know, I got better things for you. It wasn't like that. I had to push on the the <laughs> the, the accelerator in my car a little faster to get through that, that little street. But I recognized as I kept going on my way home whenever I'd leave and I'd have to come home, I, there was moments where it started getting easier. There was moments that I actually sat at the green light and realized this ain't even calling to me anymore. This ain't even who I am anymore. And so it's in that it's not that it's going to be an easy ride, but it's in the more that you surrender, the more that you pursue to know God, the more he will talk to you, the more he will bless you, the more. And it's not about the blessings because truth is I could live in a tent with nothing. And as long as I'm with him, I'm fine. You know, if he told me to walk away from every blessing he's given me barefoot, that's cool because he's with me, you know, and he is all we need. So pursue him. And man, the rest is is just bonuses. It's just blessings that he loves to give because he loves us. Yeah, it's it doesn't make it easy, but it is it's far worth it. It is so yeah. worth it. Yeah, so the, the struggle's real. It's And I love scripture. He says that there's other brothers and sisters that go through the same things we do. So it's not like you're alone in your struggle. But those struggles, the more we depend on him, the more we surrender to him, the easier they do get and the less that they talk to us. Man, those things don't have a voice on me anymore. I've been in bars. He takes me into bars where I get to minister to the bartenders. I've bartended to, or I've baptized two bartenders, you know, just in the past few years that, and at the same bar that he saved me from that I used to go and get drunk at. Come on, you know? So he takes us out of the darkness, but there's moments that he'll put you back in there to be the light he's called us to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. So good. Thank you so much, Kina. This has been absolutely phenomenal. How can people get a hold of you and your book? Absolutely. My heart in this whole thing is to encourage others towards him to be reachable. So I can be reached at kinabren.com. I have my website set up. You, there's merchandise and books. If you order from that website, you get it directly from me. So I autograph the books and I can ship them. Uh, if you want to jump on Amazon, Kindle, um, uh, Barnes and Noble, all it's they're available across all platforms. On kinabren.com, there's a little extra with merchandise, and I'll autograph the books from that website. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so so much. You have definitely laid the word right in our laps, and it's for us as the audience listening to this podcast to go and do something with it, right? Surrender whatever it is that's holding you back from breaking those chains, breaking those limiting beliefs, breaking those uh, generational curses, as we call them these days. All those things can be surrendered to him so that we can make room for his calling on our life moving forward and creating that impact. Kina, give us a last few words for our audience. What do you want to leave them with? You have been an absolute blessing. First and foremost, let me just thank you uh, ah, for everything so far. Thank you for having me. I think uh, to close out, I, I think my biggest thing would be that he does the heavy lifting. So you don't have to change yourself and make things right to come to him. He wants you just as you are. He loves you just as you are. You haven't done anything so far away from who he is that he can't touch you and love you and change you. You don't have to clean up to come to him. The cross was, I mean, the cross does it. So when we come to him, he sees us through that cross. Father sees us through that cross. And Jesus is at the right hand, just advocating for us. So don't, don't believe you have to clean yourself up to come to him because it's Jesus who does the heavy lifting. Jesus has already done it to clean you up. So just come to him with a pure heart, seek him, 
seek him to know him. And man, he wants to know you more than you want to know him. Trust me, he's not going to give you bread. He's not going to give you a stone if you ask for bread. And I love that he says, if you want wisdom, ask for wisdom. He's not going to condemn you for it. So just seek him with a pure heart and he will show up and change your life. Yes, he will. As I have seen it happen in so many ways um, in just a short amount of time. And it's just been beautiful again to just be reminded that, again, there is hope. There is a way out. There is an exit plan to the hamster wheel we've been riding on that we true we haven't chosen to really got get off or think that we're gonna continue to trip through those uh spaces but no you you do have the opportunity to redeem um everything that is called on for your life so thank you again so much it's been an absolute pleasure thank you to all our listeners um drop a comment uh like love subscribe share um, if you believe that someone needs to hear this message, which I know we all need to be reminded of it. Uh, thank you guys so much for, again, tuning into another episode. Have a great day. And as I always say, make it count. Bye for now. Bye.